Today I'm going full blown Sam Ovens on you guys. And I mean it. I even brought a friend to help me in this very special video. So say hello to Johnny. Guys, please be polite. Johnny's saying, hey guys. So this is my little friend Johnny and his home, the whiteboard. Unfortunately, we all have to cut his throat eventually. But today is about speaking languages and the importance of speaking other languages and how you can learn other languages. A bunch of tools that you can use to help you to learn quicker, to learn better. And well, the first thing is motivation in anything. You need to start with why you need to start with the purpose for doing something. So if you want to learn a language, why do you want to learn it in the first place? So maybe it's because you want to travel someplace or maybe it's because you want to broaden your horizons. It's because you love the music. Maybe it's because you want to watch movies in that language. Maybe it's because of work. Many times we want to learn a language because we want to work somewhere that speaks the language or especially the English language that has become sort of a lingua franca in our times. So we can speak to people from various places, from various backgrounds using English then to many people, learning English is important, is a good idea. And you guys know that usually I speak only English in these videos, even though theoretically it's my second language, because the first would be Portuguese, of course, since I'm Brazilian. But I actually know a bit more or less of a few other languages. and. I'm going to play a bit of a game today. So I've written each of them on these post-its and I'll shuffle them and I'll get them at random. And then I'll talk a little bit in that language, even though I haven't practiced anything. So I'll just off the cuff in each of these languages, I'll try to say something and then I will come back to English to talk a little bit about how I learned that language and a bit of the tips that I can give you for learning each language or better yet, not for learning each of them, but that you can use in any language that you want to learn. But back to why you should learn. That's the thing that in many places, especially in big countries like in Australia, a United States, a Brazil, you might not see that much of a need to learn another language because you pretty much will only see people on your day to day that speak the language that's the main language of the country. So you pretty much won't ever see someone that doesn't speak your language or at least that it's expected of them to speak your language. But in places like Europe, in which the countries are relatively small, it's quite common that you'll see foreigners or people that come from other countries and either one of you will have to learn each other's language, usually the language of the country you're in, or both of them will speak a common language that nowadays is usually English, but it used to be French. And that's why there's the term lingua franca because French, so franca, France has everything to do with that. And French used to be the langue de la noblesse, so the, the language of the nobles. And even the English nobility used to speak French, with it, which is quite odd. And it's quite interesting thinking about it nowadays that the nobility of the English that are such, such rivals of the French, and they used to speak French. So that's funny, at least to me it is. Anyways. Let's shuffle these little papers and it's hard because they're posted. So they kind of get a little glued together, but I'm trying to shuffle them the best I can. I won't even look really. So, okay, let's see this one. Um, 
let's just put the other one here. Ah, English. Didn't want English to be the first, but it kind of makes sense because it was the first language that I had to learn anyway. So to be quite honest, I was very lucky as a kid to have an exposure to English from since I was about three. Of course, before that, my parents used to watch movies in English and listen to songs in English all the time. But when I was free, I wasn't adapting very well to the school that my parents had put me in. And they were kind of desperate, kind of thinking about what, what should they do next, like looking for another school and that kind of thing. And on a Sunday, there was, there was this um, article on the newspaper about an American school in my hometown, Campinas. So EAC, the American School of Campinas, that's EAC in Portuguese, of course, Escola Americana de Campinas. And they were, I'm not sure if it was a 40th or the 50th anniversary of the school, something like that, but it was on the local newspaper. And it talked about the, the method that they teach the, the kids, that's the Montessori method. And my grandma, my mom's mom, was all the craze about Maria Montessori and how they taught kids and they had those little stations and the kids would go to a station then to the next and the next and they'd have a lot of uh, oh man just because I'm talking about learning a language now I can't speak it anymore <laughs> so you had a lot of autonomy from an early age. So when you were very little, you had a lot of autonomy. So they took me to the school to do some tests because they wouldn't let anyone go into that school anyways. And of course I passed with flying colors because I was like this golden boy kind of kid, not trying to brag or anything, just matter of fact. And at first they wanted to put me there for one or two years just so I got the exposure to the language from an early age and like pretty much learn to read and everything at that school already. So pretty much English, though it, it, I don't think it's the best, my English is the best it ever it was because since I don't use it that much on a day-to-day -day basis, like mostly I use Portuguese with most people that I talk to, it could be, a bit sharper, but it's still there. And I hope that you guys can notice that it's still there. But anyways, yeah, I learned from a very young age at the American school. So it was really a regular school and I had ESL classes. So English as a second language classes in the beginning to get me up to speed with the kids that were actually American or British or came from, because I, that was one of the things that was awesome as well, because I had that privilege of being able to study since I was very little with kids from the US, from kids from all over Europe, from India, Pakistan, a bunch of places really. So that was a very interesting thing in my formative years that really broadened my horizons and opened my mind to being able to deal with people from different backgrounds, people with different cultures. So that was awesome as well. But yeah, basically the way I learned English was pretty much the same way that regular kids in English speaking countries learn, I guess. I, I went to school and everything was in English there pretty much. So that was it. Now let's, let's see if we have something more interesting in the next ones uh okay so this one's interesting french uh français vraiment je ne parle je parle pas de français Seul, seulement un, un peu de français je, je comprends un peu uh, je peux voyager en France, en Suisse, mais 
I wouldn't say that I really speak French and it's probably the worst on the list, though I do understand quite a bit, but I only had a bit of classes when I was in college and actually I didn't even finish the whole semester of, <laughs> of that French course that I was doing because at the time the, the teacher was a bit too calmy for me. And at the time, I was more right-leaning than I am right now, actually. So, and I had a bunch of classes that actually counted in college. So I ended up not taking that class, extracurricular class, that seriously. But yeah, I, I can, I can definitely travel. I can definitely order something at a restaurant and. I can understand a lot of things if I read or, or if I listen to French or, and if I watch some movies, but I, that's probably the worst of the examples I have. And man, these post-its are very, they're gluing onto each other. So now let's try another one. I, I've, Turn them around. So let's see this one. Oh, this one's actually a bit more fun. It's a German, Deutsch. So, I think it does. Yeah. You wissen, you wisst, dass ich war. Ich habe schon in Deutschland gelebt. Um, in 2018 und 19, ich war in Stuttgart für ein Praktikum. Und ich mache da das, ich mach der Praktikum in Maschinenbau, weil ich bin ein Maschinenbauingenieur. Und ich lernte Deutsch. Ich hätte Ich hatte einen sehr gut Deutschkurs gemacht, sehr intensiv. Und ich hatte, ich hatte da die beste Lehrer in der Welt. Wirklich, wirklich. Frau Kühnert war eine Oma, wie eine, eine kleine Oma, die Die, sie, sie war wirklich schön, wirklich schön. Und natürlich, weil ich schon hat, ja, fünf Jahre, es bin fünf Jahre, dass ich nach zum Brasilien gegangen habe und ein bisschen Ich habe Deutschkurs gemacht hier in Brasilien, aber natürlich, es, es tut mir leid, aber mein Deutsch ist nicht so gut. Um, and yeah, as I was saying, it really, I'm really sad that my German is not as good as it used to be, because when I was still in Germany, it was quite good, and people were, people that I worked with, even complimented me because I learned it real quick, but you use it or lose it, I guess. So when I was in Germany, when I got there, I, I soon realized that I wouldn't be able to integrate to my team. And also because I'm doing this all off the cuff and I didn't prepare anything. I was improvising in German. So please cut me some slack, guys. If I had to speak to a German person and like on a meeting or something, I'd be prepared naturally. So come on, wasn't that bad. But anyways, I realized that I really needed to learn German because even the Chinese guy and the Turkish guys, everyone spoke German. And I thought that it was lacking because it didn't want people to have to speak to English only to talk to me. And like everyone was talking in, in German and then someone would 
have to talk to me in English. And it was just messing the chemistry. So I knew I had to learn. And I didn't want to be able to just like say hello and thank you to the cashier at the supermarket, that kind of thing. I wanted to be able to understand what was happening around me. So a bit over a month after I got there, I started doing a very intensive course in German. So I did it three times a week, about three and a half hours each time. So almost 10 hours of course every week. And my teacher was magnificent. She was this little old grandma style lady. And she was super nice and she incentivized us to speak in our broken German as much as we could. And she really put us on the spot. Like she would be very comprehensive. She would try to give you the words you were looking for. But at the same time, she wouldn't really, I think we never said anything in English to her or in any other language. So, and we were also at that that was a very interesting experience as well because there were people from all over the world learning language, learning German. So there was a guy, I believe he was from Serbia. There was a girl from Montenegro. There was a girl from Ukraine. There were people from all over Europe and even the world. I think later on there was a guy from Pakistan and a bunch of Brazilians that I ended up making friends with. So it was a very interesting experience, but it wasn't the only way that I learned. I also used to listen to podcasts. So there were these podcasts about German learning and they would speak slowly and like not necessarily slowly, but they they'd have this dialogue or this little story. And then the guy would comment on what had happened and, just so you can get used to the language. So it was probably A1, A2 level. And they also had the, the options of going B1, B2. And eventually I started listening to more elaborate things. So podcasts and YouTube videos, also just by sheer exposure to the language, by listening to people talking about it, or better yet, using the language next to you, you end up picking up on stuff. But German is a language that's very structured. So that's the funny thing about languages as well, that you notice that people tend to think in a way that's very akin to the language that they speak or vice versa. Who knows? But who knows if Germans think in a very structured way and that's why they have this fame of abiding by the rules and all that because of the language or if the language is that way because they already fought that way, who knows? But it's very interesting to see how languages shape the way you see the world. And even for people that speak more than one language, when you're speaking another language, your personality shifts completely. And there's a very interesting phrase that says that when you're speaking a language that someone else also speaks. So maybe you're speaking English to a German speaker, for instance, you're speaking to their head, but if you speak their language, their mother tongue, you're speaking to their heart. So that's another thing about learning languages because you can get so much closer to the people if you can actually speak their language, not a language that they know. So that's a great thing to bear in mind as well. Also, another thing that I use for a while, I didn't use it that much, but I know that many people do and it can help a lot, is to use space repetition. So space repetition is basically like those flashcards. So maybe you can have a phrase over here or a word over here, and you go routinely looking at those flashcards and trying to answer the question. And in the case of 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 a language you might be thinking for instance maybe the flashcard one side of the flashcard you have the word and on the other side you can have the meaning of the word or you can have a phrase and then the meaning of the phrase 
and you can use it mix and match in a bunch of ways and there's a very interesting app that's called the anki app that's like the be all app for flashcards and that a lot of people use and i know that people use it also to study law to study medicine study subjects that you need to do a lot of memorization so that's a good idea as well but yeah i think german for me was all about the course itself and sheer exposure but also a thing that i did that i think most people didn't do was that and coming from someone that used to be a perfectionist this is quite interesting as well i totally took off the mask and i didn't care if people would think i was stupid if people would think i i was dumb because i was speaking their language totally broken and to be honest it was the complete opposite people totally took me under their wing and they tried to help me the people that i used to see every day the people that i worked with so they were super happy that i was actually trying to learn their language and and they saw that i was actually trying and that i was putting out my best effort and that i was writing emails in german and of course i was using a translator tool to help me sometimes there is a a very good translator called deepol at the time it was new but now it's not that new maybe there's something better but deepol is a very good tool to translate into languages from it's much better than google translate but yeah i was actually trying it people would correct me but in a good way so i would let them correct me and i would actually embrace that they correct me and they help me so i ended up having 30 tutors for the german language and that's another thing to learn anything you need to be willing to put some skin in the game and who cares if you're speaking like a toddler with a speech impediment who cares man the objective is to learn the objective is to get better so if you don't try especially with things like language learning you will never learn and you need to be able to okay if someone's an asshole to you because you don't speak well the problem is theirs it's not yours so this is my experience with german and now let's pick another one ah see italiano Buono, italiano è una lingua che è una lingua troppo facile per gli brasiliani perché tutti gli tutti gli suoni, tutti gli fonemi in portoghese e in italiano. Italiano è una lingua molto cantata, una lingua con le vocali sono molto aperte e, e il portoghese brasiliano anche il portoghese brasiliano è, è molto cantato è molto n- n- nostre bocche sono molto aperte e è come è come se 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 fuori il pavarotti cantante però è una come come se se parla vergogna in italiano perché perché è, è una vergogna eh, sì è, è un vergogno so io sono imbarazzato è, è, è molto imbarazzante per me che io non non parlo molto bene l'italiano solo un po è chiaro che se viaggio in Italia e se, se sono in Italia io io posso comprendere molto bene però per parlare non parlo bene e, e sono imbarazzato adesso perché io sono cittadino d'Italia e, e buono è, è, è un vergogno che, che non parli bene se sì, è, è algo che, che io voglio 
in un futuro in un futuro sì molto prossimo prossimo vo, io voglio de, adesso adesso io sono misturando tutte le tutte le lingue tutte le Stai parlando un poco di inglese, un poco di italiano, di tedesco, di el, il portoghese. Son, sono tutti qua e, e nella, mia, nella mia testa. Buono. Eh, All'inglese. So, as I was saying, it, it's a shame that I don't speak Italian right yet. I, I, must, I must really... This is something that is... It's one of the greatest shames in my life and that I really need to solve this problem because I'm actually an Italian citizen and I don't speak Italian that well. That's kind of ridiculous, though. I, I do understand quite well, I think, Italian. And I did, for a very brief period, study Italian with my parents and my uncle. We, we went to some classes. But... Really, it's more about music and films and traveling to Italy. And I think one of the things is a bit of a complacency factor as well, because Italian is actually a very easy language to learn as a Brazilian Portuguese speaker, because like I was saying, many of the sounds are the same in Brazilian Portuguese and in Italian. They are both very sung languages. I, I don't know if that's the correct way of saying this in English, but it's like you were singing. And that's why many people say, wow, Italian is such a beautiful language. And that's why, because the vocals are very open. So it's very, it's, it's, it's a nice language to listen to. And Brazilian and Portuguese also, we, we tend to, the saying a lot when we're speaking and i guess in some places it has a little bit to do with the italian immigration as well because we had so many italians coming to brazil in the past my relatives inclusive in that so yeah i um, i should definitely learn better italian and i want to live in italy for a while so that i can get that sheer exposure factor, use it in my favor and learn as quick as possible because it really is a shame that I don't speak Italian as well as I should. So, okay, next one. This is it. Like, okay, this is Portuguese, Portuguese. É, é muito sem graça, né? Falar em português é muito estranho até, tô até... Acho que eu tô até falando esquisito português agora, porque de tanto falar outras línguas, né? Principalmente inglês, mas falando todas essas outras, essa mistureba de cacete. Obviamente, português eu aprendi porque eu sou brasileiro, porque eu moro no Brasil, a maior parte da minha vida. A maioria das pessoas aqui só falam português, então você tá sempre exposto ao português. Mas... Ah, cara, e, e brasileiro sempre se encontra, né? Em qualquer lugar, você vê um brasileiro, você já sabe que é brasileiro de longe, assim. Seja pela roupa, pelo cabelo, pelo jeitão, porque fala alto, por vários motivos, né? Mas, sim, é português, é isso, né? É exposição, é tudo. Todas as dicas que eu dei aqui, acaba que eu usei para aprender português, se for ver, né? Exposição, leitura, filmes. Música, é, repetições passadas, de certa forma, porque você acaba ouvindo as mesmas palavras várias vezes e acaba entrando na sua cabeça. So, as I was saying, yeah, Portuguese is my mother tongue and I've lived most of my life in Brazil, so, of course, I speak Portuguese. And at the end of the day, I ended up using all of the tools that I've mentioned before, so space repetition, exposure, film. Uh, music, books, everything that I use in the other languages, one way or the other, I use for Portuguese as well. So, 
I guess there's not much of a secret there. Like you, yourself, with your mother tongue, you've probably learned because of the sheer exposure and listening to people around you. So the last language that I have here, and this camera is having a hard time focusing on the little papers, so I'm not sure if you'll be able to read, but it's Spanish. Entonces, español es... <laughs> Just a sheer amount of a bunch of other languages. So, volvendo. Now the, the Italian is trying to come out. Vamos a, a volver. Entonces, español es una lengua que que yo estoy intentando un poco de de platense, un poco de argentino para intentar volver a, 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 la, a, mi, a mi cabeza que habla español. Bueno, español es una lengua que en verdad que nunca he hecho clases de español, pero he viajado, mol, he viajado mucho para, para nuestros vecinos, para Argentina principalmente. Estuve muchas veces en Argentina y me encanta Argentina y los argentinos son muy buena onda. Me encanta la comida y todo. Y también estuve en Chile, estuve en Bolivia, estuve en Perú, en España. Entonces, yo he, he hablado mucho con, con nuestros vecinos y he estado en otros países y y también en España, y en, en verdad es que, que bueno, ya, ya había viajado para Argentina un par de veces, dos, tres veces creo, mas cuando realmente empecé a aprender español, pienso que fue 2015 cuando yo acababa de volver de Argentina, que estuve en Navidad en el fin de año con mi familia y compré un libro de Gabriel García Márquez, Cien Años de Soledad. Y entonces no, no hablaba mucho y comprendí un poco, pero muchas palabras no, no, no las sabía. Y compré ese libro y, y lo leí. Y bueno, muchas cosas no comprendí en cuando empecé el libro, pero en la mitad del libro ya estaba comprendiendo todo. Y después, en ese mismo año, fui con algunos amigos. En mi, primera, mi primer viaje internacional sin, sin familia, sin nada. Y fuimos a Perú. Y ahí pude practicar un poco más, pero había un amigo que hablaba más el español, entonces él naturalmente era como tuve una posición de liderazgo para hablar un poco más de español con las personas que precisábamos. Pero después viajé a España y también he visto, he, veido, he mirado muchas películas y series en Netflix y varias cosas y antes también era, era más tímido, entonces pude hablar con más personas. En, las otras, en, en cada viaje estoy hablando más y más y estoy intentando hablar más. Entonces, en el último viaje que estuve un mes y medio más o menos por Argentina, por Chile, por Bolivia, ya estaba hablando mucho más y intentando hablar más con las personas e intentando... Bueno, si, si no a ser amigos, pero por lo menos hablar más y practicar más. Y, y bueno, algunas personas incluso estaban hablando, me eh, dijeron que estaba hablando bien, entonces creo que estaba bien. Y en Bolivia estábamos con, con un grupo con más cuatro chicos españoles y, y hablamos todo en español con ellos y creo que estuve bien. Entonces, 
español para mí, como es una lengua muy similar al portugués, es similar hasta demasiado, creo, fue con películas, fue con viajes, fue con libros. Y quizás debería hacer un poco de clases para aprender a escribir mejor en español, para cosas más de trabajo, pero para viaje, para tener amigos, esas cosas, creo que mi español es perfecto. Claro, siempre podemos mejorar, pero no, no es algo que sea impeditivo. Ah, una cosa muy importante que estaba olvidando es que cuando estaba en Alemania había un tío mexicano, Roberto. Y nos quedamos muy amigos porque, bueno, fuimos un, como dos meses después que estaba allá, fuimos a una visita a una de nuestras fábricas y cuando estábamos volviendo, en la ida estábamos yo, Roberto y Jens, que era un alemán de, de mi equipo, de mi team en Alemania. Pero cuando volvimos, Jens se quedó allá o fue a una otra fábrica después, no volvió con, con nosotros y estábamos solo yo y eh, Roberto, entonces empecé a hablar con él en, en español, y claro que en español, portuñol no súper bien, creo, pero, pero podía, pod nosotros podríamos nos comprender muy bien, y, y cuando no sabía alguna palabra, podría hablar en inglés, porque Roberto hablaba bien inglés, entonces algunas palabras lo decía en inglés, y entonces de pronto las entendía y bueno en todo el resto del tiempo que estuve allá hablaba con Roberto casi todos los días y siempre en español siempre practicando y, y nos quedamos muy amigos en este tiempo porque era el único que hablaba con él en español entonces nos quedamos con una ligación especial y también porque era mexicano soy brasileño y hay una cosa muy muy similar, ¿eh? la cultura de, claro que hay muchas diferencias, pero creo que la, la esencia es muy similar entre los mexicanos y los brasileños, claro que con otros pueblos latinos también, de América Latina, más creo que hay, hay cosas que solo México y Brasil tienen de similar, porque México es un país muy grande también y con una, una población grande de como, no sé, 150 millones, 160. So, es el único que verdaderamente puede como que competir, pero no exactamente competir con Brasil, que tiene como 200 millones. Y entonces hay, hay muchas similaridades. Y, y esta, tener Roberto y hablar con él todos los días, fue muy, muy bueno para aprender el español. So, wow, I talked a lot in Spanish now. And I think it's natural because I've just came back from a trip that I spent a month and a half in Spanish-speaking countries. And like I was just saying, there was this guy that I worked with in Germany, Roberto, and he was Mexican. So I ended up, becoming friends with him and I would speak Spanish to him pretty much every day. So, which was as well, one of the main reasons I think that we ended up becoming friends in the first place, because like I said, in the beginning of the video, when you speak a language that someone understands, you're speaking to their head. When you speak their mother tongue, you're speaking to their heart. So it's easier to really get that connection to the person if you're speaking their own language and not a language that they know. And that's going back to the beginning as well. One of the reasons why learning languages is important, and even at a time in which I know there will be technologies, or maybe there even are some technologies that can translate things real time. And I've seen those glasses or with the headphones, and you can talk to a Chinese guy and you'll have subtitles 
on your glasses or you have a translation on the headphones pretty much real time. And that's awesome. That's really good. But I don't think that learning languages will ever lose its, its significance because that human connection is something different. You may have a bunch of tools and of course they'll help you. And of course I'm all in for, for them. And I, I know that they will revolutionize a bunch of things. But at the end of the day, there's something that you speaking to them, to another person, in person, in their language, it's it's about layers. You know how Shrek talked about ogres being like onions because they have layers? I think it's all about the layers as well when we're talking about this. So you have these layers and it's hard for for people to understand, I guess, if you don't know another language, but it's very worthwhile. And it also opens up your brain to a bit of lateral thinking. It opens up your brain in ways that it's hard, it's even hard for me to explain because I started learning languages from a very young age. So I'm not sure how much different I could be if I had started when I was like 15 or 20 years old, I'd probably be a totally different person if it wasn't for that experience back then. So for me, it's hard to explain. But, you know, people say that it's easier to learn when you're a kid. And that's a given, I guess, because not only are you a sponge, that's something that people love to say, that children are sponges. And it is true, but I think also it's about you don't care that much about what other people will think when you're a kid. So you don't care that much about saying the wrong things and being corrected, at least when you're a little kid and you are more willing to emulate what other people are saying when you're a little kid. So you end up emulating better. And sometimes I think adults learning a language overthink learning the language and they try to translate things in real time in their head, which really doesn't work out that much. So going back to space repetition and the Anki app and the flashcards kind of thing. You you shouldn't be thinking of language as the words themselves. Better It's better to think of them as concepts in your brain. So you have the concept for an apple in your brain. So if I'm talking about an apple, you're probably imagining an apple right now. So you're imagining that fruit, red, probably... If you're a bit weird, you might be thinking of a green apple. But probably most of you are having a very similar vision in your head. Maybe you can imagine yourself taking a bite out of the apple. Maybe your apple has a little worm in it. Who knows? Maybe you're thinking about the witch in Snow White and how apples can be dangerous. Or you're thinking of Adam and Eve and the apple of truth. So you see how just by thinking about the apple, you make so many connections in your mind. And it's all about making a brain map because that's how the, the brain works. It's about connecting, um, connecting concepts. So if you're trying to memorize each word, but especially trying to translate them in your mind, it, you'll have a harder time than if you just think about the concepts. So for instance, this is a brain map that I did for an interview that I had today, earlier today, on the day of the recording, not the day that I put out the video. But it's easier if you have this, these connections to the concepts when you're doing anything really. 
So I'll probably end up putting out a video on brain mapping, only brain mapping one day. But it's easier if you think about the concepts. And kids, since they're learning their first or second language and they don't have so many concepts in their minds to start with, so for them, it's easier to think about the concepts themselves and not be constantly trying to translate things in their minds 24-7. So I think this plays a great part in being easier for kids to learn the language. But really, you can learn languages even when you're old. It's theoretically easier, of course, as a kid, but you shouldn't let... But you shouldn't be thinking, oh, I'm already 28. I shouldn't be able to learn that language. That's simply not true. That's simply not true. There are a lot of tools that you can use to help you. And even if you never get to a professional C2 level, like proficient, who cares? You'll be doing a very good exercise for your brain. You'll be expanding your horizons. You'll be able to travel somewhere else that you wouldn't be able to, or of course you would be able to, but it will be easier and it will be a better experience because you will be able to understand what's going on around you. You will be able to read the signs and know what's happening. You'll be able to read a menu and know what it means. It's such a better deeper experience when you go to a place and you're able to ask people questions and you're able to understand even if you don't understand everything that they're saying but you get the gist of it it's such a it's a deeper feeling it's you feel so actualized you feel so happy when this happens when the people actually understand what you're trying to say in their language mm -hmm. and you understand them back it's such a glorious feeling and I really encourage people to try and learn other languages because it's one of those unbeatable feelings that you have when you see that they're understanding you and that you understand them back and then you can go to different places. You can make friends with people that probably you wouldn't be able to make friends with because they don't speak English or whatever. So learning languages is awesome. And I truly encourage you guys. And dude, if I can make a video butchering six languages in the same video, you can also learn a little bit of another language, okay? You can learn a little bit of Spanish to go to your vacation in Cancun, or you can learn a bit of French to say, I want some water to the to waiter, you know, so. En eau, s'il vous plaît. Maybe it's une eau, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> what, whatever. So you can, you can, you can learn a little bit of Mandarin, even if it's not super good, but a little bit, just so you can see some signs and understand what they're about or ask for something at your hotel without needing to spend your nights at a hotel that's catered only to Western tourists because then you'll be missing out on so much. You'll be missing out on the real experiences and of being able to see the world through a different lens, through the lens of the locals. And that's one of the greatest things about traveling is being able to see the world through a different lens, through a lens that you would never be able to experience in your home country. And yeah, guys, this was me talking about learning languages for almost one hour. If you came all this far, for God's sake, leave a like, leave a comment, follow the Rock and Road to Success because you are amazing, man. You were able to watch me rant for almost one hour, watch me butcher a bunch of languages, and you're still here, you're a rock star. You are an absolute beast. So please share with your friends. 
follow the rock and roll to success and thanks for being with me so far and comment what language would you want to learn and why because i want to know if you guys want to learn it to use it to work if you want to learn it because you want that spanish boyfriend that's super hot in ibiza i want to know all that so please comment Keep rocking, keep rolling, and let's learn languages to see the world.